Over the last year, we have seen the critical and or financial failures of multiple big budget video games. Examples include Fallout 76, Anthem, Battlefield 5, Battlefront 2, and the Blizzard community's reaction to Diablo Immortal being so bad that it actually lowered Activision's stock prices. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Boo! You stink! After all these years, it feels like Western consumers are finally starting to get fed up with the low quality and penny-pinching tactics of developers. Under normal circumstances, I would be thrilled. There's just one issue. The Chinese. It's well known that in economics, if a consumer is unhappy with the product, they can usually turn somewhere else to buy their goods. What a lot of people don't take into account is that if the producer is unhappy with their current consumer base, they also have the option of changing who they want to target their products to. With Western players showing signs that they may no longer want to support bloated AAA video games filled with pay-to-win loot boxes, companies are starting to realize there are hundreds of millions of players overseas that will. And um, Emily Peck, this is a really good deal if you decide to spend your jade on summoning. You see, the Chinese have a different history and culture when it comes to video games than we do. One reason for this is that with China developing behind most Western nations, it has taken some time for the country to get enough wealthy consumers to make buying video games a sensible option. But even more importantly is China's ban on foreign products. For example, it wasn't until relatively recently that it was even legal to sell video game consoles in China. This ban also extends to most Western games in general, with each game having to be approved on a case-by-case -case basis before it can be sold in China. This has led to a huge amount of domestically developed copycat games in that country. Pretty much every major Western game has a Chinese-approved and developed equivalent, but with some added differences we'll get into later. So while Western gamers are by now used to and in large amounts starting to get sick of current trends in Western gaming, to the Chinese, a lot of these are fresh and new. While it's been a long time coming, over recent years, China has proven itself to be a huge force in the gaming industry, helping games like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds to become the best-selling video game in PC history. With China's slow embrace of capitalism, we also see a different cultural outlook on wealth. You might at first think the Chinese, given their communist history, would be wary of wealth and all that it brings. But in reality, it seems to be the opposite. Modern Chinese culture is a culture recently seduced by consumerism. Because of this, we see popular Chinese trends like the Flaunt Your Wealth Challenge, which is literally people showing the rest of the internet how rich they are. Sure, we have YouTubers that do that here too, but at least they try to act like they aren't straight up showing off even if they totally are. It's this mentality that made it so things such as microtransactions and pay-to-win mechanics, things which are looked down on in the West, especially the latter, are not only acceptable to many Chinese gamers, but are actually wanted. Uh, wait, won't wreck packs with special weapons break the exquisitely refined balance of arena multiplayer? Secure your noise hole, soldier! Grown-ups are talking. Damn it. After all, if you can buy items that let everyone around you know that you are richer than them, not only are you winning in the game, you are letting the fellow players around you know you're winning in real life as well. And honestly, isn't that what truly is important in the end? It's what you can buy with what you've got, that's what counts. While companies like EA have slowly embraced pay-to-win mechanics in their games and were basically forced to roll back on them in response to fan outcry, Chinese companies like Tencent are making bank, allowing people to pay their way to victory. Another difference between Western and the Chinese gaming demographics is the popularity of phone gaming. While mobile gaming is so big in the West that you can likely find any parent or child playing on one if you take a stroll outside, it's actually even bigger in China than in most Western countries. China is soon expected to overtake the United States for the largest mobile gaming market, and companies have taken notice. For example, while Diablo Immortal created a lot of backlash from fans due to its phone exclusivity, they weren't really thinking of their PC fanbase when they made this decision. 
Diablo Immortal was a game made with the Chinese mobile market in mind, and it isn't the only example of a beloved franchise going mobile exclusive, with EA having their latest Command & Conquer entry be a mobile game as well. But it's more than just China's buying habits that I think will change the gaming landscape. What gets me most worried is China's censorship laws. It's well known that China bans historical events, specific phrases, and even Winnie the Pooh due to the people comparing him to their Chinese Prime Minister, but China also bans things you might not expect. For example, depictions of skeletons are banned in China as well due to cultural reasons. At first you might think, well, that doesn't affect me, I don't live in China. But you have to keep in mind how the global market works. First, remember that many Chinese gamers use the same services we do. For example, a recent game was taken off of Steam by its developers after it was mass downvoted by Chinese Steam users due to the game referencing the Winnie the Pooh Prime Minister connection we talked about earlier. But more importantly than just that, it simply doesn't make economic sense to make two versions of the same game one for the Chinese and non-Chinese players. While changing names, words, and text in video games is common when localizing a game, covering up and changing in-game models costs time and money. It's why, in order to save time, Dota decided to just outright turn beloved Skeleton King into Wraith King in Dota 2, and it will likely lead to developers keeping Chinese markets in mind while in the designing phase of future video games. Basically, if you are someone who mains necromancer in RPGs, you may soon be out of luck. And this is just the start. Remember how I said video games have to be approved before they can be sold in China? Well, just last year, China created its Online Game Ethics Committee, and with it, we can expect some big changes. Not even PUBG, the once biggest game in China and a game that got big mainly because of China, is safe. It recently got straight up banned for being too violent and contrary to China's traditional socialist core values. Again, China is a huge market. And if you want to sell your games in that market, you better make sure your games align with their values. I'm not going to fearmonger and say that all games are going to necessarily become kid-friendly socialist propaganda, but I definitely expect to see certain companies try to tone down their violence and adult themes in response to China's demands. Especially once you consider my next point. With Chinese companies like Tencent now owning a large or even majority ownership in the biggest major IPs of today from outright owning League of Legends, having a majority share for PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, and currently owning 48% of Epic Games stock, the company behind Fortnite, they definitely have a large direct influence on many gaming companies. Sure, Epic Games says Tencent isn't influencing their decision making, but considering they turned Fortnite into a battle royale specifically based on how well PUBG was doing in China, and considering Tencent owns 48% of their company, it's basically unquestionable that Tencent's opinion influences them to some degree. And hey, Tencent makes most of their money in China and understands Chinese business. Is it really a stretch to think that they'll try to make sure the games they are funding will be able to be sold in the country they make the most money in? Now, I want to make it clear I'm bringing up these concerns not because I hate the Chinese. I think more countries playing and creating games is generally a pretty good thing. In gaming, for the past 40 years, we have basically just had two flavors to choose from. Western games or Japanese games. With a few Eastern European spices thrown in every now and then. Each culture added a lot to the medium, giving us new experiences that I'm definitely happy exist. I have seen and played a few Chinese games that are starting to show a characteristic cultural spark. Each culture is going to bring in some good and some bad. It's easier to see the bad right now because things like pay to win mechanics and censorship are things gamers in general have already been worried about for some time. I can only hope that China lessens its restrictions after seeing the economic and cultural benefits gaming can bring to its country. For too long, Chinese games have been dominated by copycats trying to make shallow and restricted imitations of what the West has developed. China has a long and rich history. The best they can do is promote their cultural values by allowing Chinese developers to make and sell games that show this off. 
Doing so would fall in line with the current modernization of Chinese industries we are seeing today, where more and more income is being generated through the trade of goods between them and outside nations. In conclusion, I say that as time goes on and the industry continues to adapt, I hope we can see new types of games, new experiences, and not just more ways to shamelessly take my money or restrict my favorite hobby. See ya.